In this lesson, we will determine the domain and range of a function from its graph. Let's review, shall we? Let's look at an example of a discrete graph versus a continuous graph. Here is a discrete graph. It's a graph with points that are not connected, so we call that a discrete graph, or ordered pairs in this case. Here we have a few examples of a continuous graph. Notice that there are smooth curves and there are no breaks or jumps. So a graph that has a line that is connected is called a continuous graph. Continuous graphs can be drawn without lifting the pencil. When dealing with continuous graphs, it is helpful to represent the domain or the range using inequalities. Here we have the inequality x is greater than 2. Uh, I'll start at 2. Notice that I have an open circle at 2 because actually the point 2 is not a part of the inequality of the region that I want to represent. Here we are indicating all the values on the number line that are bigger than 2, greater than 2. So we are writing here x is greater than 2. In this particular case, 2 is not included in the solution set. As we continue, let's look at another example. Suppose we wanted to say x is between negative 5 and 9, including those two points. On a number line, it will look like this. We would have an endpoint at negative 5, and we would have an endpoint at 9. And we would shade all the distance, everything in between. So how would we read this? We can read this as x is greater than or equal to negative 5, but less than or equal to 9. OK, let's look at the domain of a graph. We're talking about the set of all its x values. In order to find the domain or to locate it, we're going to look on the graph from left to right. Okay. Once we identify those points, we're going to use the x values to indicate the domain. We're going to put our left endpoint right here, the x value. And we're going to put the x value of the right endpoint right there. Now, when we do the range, find the range of a graph, we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to look from bottom to top because we're looking at the set of all y values. To find the range on the graph, we look from bottom to top, as I just said. We're going to put the minimum y value here, or the bottom value, if we call it that, since we're looking from bottom to top. And then we'll look for the maximum y value on the graph. It may or may not be an endpoint. Uh, either either one of these. They don't necessarily have to be inputs. Uh, but we're going to put that value right there. And that's how we're going to represent the domain and range of a graph. As you mentioned before, if these are inequalities on the line, then we're going to include those points in the inequality notation. Let's look at these examples in a little detail. Okay, let's find the domain of the graph on the left. Let's identify our endpoints. Okay, we notice that our domain then, if we look all the way to the left, starts at negative four and ends at five. Okay, you might notice that there's an open circle at five, four, which means we're gonna exclude that. That means we're gonna indicate that with a strict inequality. So what does our domain look like? In inequality notation. X is uh, greater than or equal to negative 4, but less than 5, strictly less than 5. Okay? Strict inequality right there. Okay? Let's look at the range. If we look at our the bottom of the graph, we're at negative 2. We look at the top of the graph, we're at positive 4, which is excluded. So applying the same thinking, we're going from negative 2, uh, y is greater than or equal to negative 2, but strictly less than 4. And that's how we indicate our range. So we got another example. Here we have negative 5, negative 2. There's negative 1, 4, 
and we have two, one. Okay. So if we're doing our domain, let's let's look at our domain first. Our domain values all the way to the left start at negative five. That is the furthest list left the graph is. It stops going, uh, stops at uh, domain value of two. So no problem there. We just simply write our domain x is greater than negative five, greater than or equal to negative five, but it is less than and equal to two. Okay, no problem there. Let's look at the range. Our minimum point is negative five, negative two, so our y values start at negative two. And then they end at four. And they end at four because that is the highest point on the graph. So our y value is four and everything's included. So we can go from our range is y is greater than or equal to negative two, but greater also it is less than four, but equal to four and equal to four. Quick recap. When you have a strict inequality, either less than or greater than, then you're going to have an open circle to indicate that that point is excluded. When you have an underlying inequality, then that means the point is included and there won't be an open circle that will be filled in. Let's look at a few special cases. What do we do when we don't have two endpoints? Let's say we only have one endpoint. Well, identify that endpoint. And we can draw a domain line at negative three. And there's not another one we can draw because the X values just increase from that because we're going to the right, from left to right, and the graph never stops. So we can say our domain is X is greater than or equal to negative three because the point is shaded in, so filled in, so there is no excluded points. Same thing with the range, looking from bottom to top, you can identify, we've already identified the range point at five, and since the graph is heading toward the bottom from the top, then do we, that's the maximum point. Then we can say that the range is Y is less than or equal to five. Let's look at the graph on the right. This time we have an excluded point at three, seven. If we look at the domain, we can draw a domain line here. As you can see, the, the, the domain is X is less than three. Notice that we don't underline the inequality because of the open circle there and we are heading toward the left, okay? If we do the same thing with the range, we can draw our, uh, identify seven there, and the line is heading downward toward the bottom, so we can, we can see why it's less than seven. And that's what we do if we have this one impulse. And what if we have no impulse at all, endpoints at all? But if we try to identify a domain by looking left or right, we can't really draw a domain line here because it never, the graph never really stops. It keeps going to the left infinitely. And the graph also extends infinitely to the right. So that means that the entire number line is the domain of the graph. So I'm going to erase these since they don't really apply. And we can say, again, our domain is all real numbers. That's what that script R means. And then when we look at the range, we see that there is a minimum Y value or bottom of the graph right here at Y equals zero. And there is not a, notice that I can't really draw a maximum Y value because it's just gonna go right, it's gonna continue onward. So. In that case, all I'm gonna say is that the range is just y is greater than or equal to zero. And remember, the script R means all real numbers. Okay, you've concluded the video, on to your practice.